with all the gluing. So what we're working on today is getting this real number system um, graphic organizer complete. What I would like you to have on your desk right now is this, a pen or pencil, and highlighters that you can share with your neighbors. It doesn't matter what colors we're using, but we're going to use more than one color in doing this today. I am trying to record this, so if we can keep, keep side conversations off, it will help the distractions when somebody's trying to watch this on their own. So what we have here is the real number system. And included in this graphic organizer are all of the numbers that we recognize in the world. So any number that is real is in this system. If you notice, there's two sides of it. There's this side here with a set of boxes that get larger. And there's this side here with a rectangle that goes the other direction. What I have here is a 3D model of the same thing. The idea is that my black box here is the real number system. Everything that's in this is recognized as a real number. But there's different size sets of numbers that are included in, um, in ever-growing sets. And then there's this set over here that is separate. So let's keep this in mind, and I will be using this as we're taking notes on our graphic organizer today. We're going to start with this side here. And the smallest box is represented here by my little yellow box. And it is what we call the natural numbers. These are also known often as the counting numbers, as like a nickname. I don't know where all of these names came from, but when I think about little kids getting used to our numbers, they naturally start counting from what number? Zero. They usually start with one. Picture a little kid you know, or even yourself as a little kid. They start with the number one, and then they go up from there. Am I right? That's what this number set is. It goes one, two, three, four, on and on and on. <clears throat> and I believe that they are called the natural numbers because that's naturally how we come to understand them. So let's just highlight this, pretending like it's one of my nesting boxes. It doesn't need to match colors. Then we have another set. It is slightly bigger than the natural numbers. This box makes it look like it's a lot bigger, but it really isn't. It only includes one more number. <coughs> Excuse me. You all know this name. These are the whole numbers. All of the natural numbers are in this set. So that one, two, three, four, five, counting up and up and up. All of those are in this set, but what's been added to it is that number that little kids don't start with. It's zero and the natural numbers. So what's been added to the natural or the whole numbers is zero. 
Otherwise, this set of numbers is exactly the same. It just has one more number added to it. This new number set, our next largest set, practically doubles in size. The natural numbers go in it, the whole numbers go in it, and then when we add these new, this new set, it pretty much doubles in size the numbers that we have. These are the integers. We define this set as the whole numbers and their opposites. When I think of the integers as a unit, I think of a number line. Number lines tend to have zero in the middle, and they tend to go up by positive numbers. And they tend to go down by the negative numbers, the opposites of the whole numbers. And we know that number line goes on and on and on. It just keeps getting added to with whole numbers. When I say it practically doubled, it's not exactly doubled because of zero. Zero is a standout number again that doesn't have an opposite. All of the other whole numbers have an opposite. Who's feeling like this is mostly familiar? You, you know these numbers and you know that they belong together. You may not have known that they had all of these specific names. Oops. And then we complete our set. The biggest set is the numbers that we think of in between the numbers on a number line. What goes in between the numbers on a number line? Fractions go in between. What else goes in between? Decimals. We call these the rational numbers. Rational numbers include the word ratio in them. And they include fractions and decimals. So let's go put some example numbers in. I could put the number 7 over 1 in the rational numbers. This number would also go into the integers, wouldn't it? Would 7 be on this number line as a whole number or its opposite? Would 7 be with the whole numbers? And would it be with the natural numbers or the counting numbers? That's why I like this model here. There's some numbers that are in this smallest set, this natural numbers, 
And if they're in this set, they are also in all of these other sets. But what if I had negative 7 over 1? It goes in this set. It's a rational number because I can write it over that 1 and make it into a ratio. Where else does it belong in this set? Yeah, in the integers. Where else does it belong? Does it belong anywhere else? Negatives start with the integers, right? This is where we start getting positives and negatives. So this one belongs in the rationals and the integers, but it's not in these other two. It got added in. So something that starts in this middle one is in all of them, but that doesn't mean that everything that's in this outer bucket is in all of the others. We might have the number 0 0.75. That's only going to be in the rational numbers. Things that can only be written in between these spaces on the number line only can be written really in between this one is going to be here. All of these others, anything else that's um, in between goes in rationals. If it's a whole or it's opposite, it's an integer. Where would I put the square root of 25? What does the square root of 25 equal? What does it equal? 5. Where can 5 go? Yeah, it goes to all three, doesn't it? I'm going to put an arrow that just kind of takes it to all of them. We can even have things with exponents in here. 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 27. 27 is over an invisible 1, so it's rational. 27 is also a whole number, so it's an integer and a whole number and a natural number. So this would also be with all three others. Then we have this one. It does not fit this in it. These numbers don't go on this side of the number set at all. They're a whole separate set. These are called irrational numbers. The reality with irrational numbers is we could visualize where about on a number line they are. They are, tipping, they are always going to be in between two numbers, but we can't necessarily pinpoint exactly where because these are things with decimals that go on and on and on. So non-repeating decimals, the number pi, the square root of 2 is a very famous irrational number.
we know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2. And we know that the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So I could say the square root of 5 is a real number. But it doesn't equal a whole number, does it? There's only specific numbers I can put into square roots that come out and equal a whole number. This one equals 2, and this one equals 3. That means that this one has to be somewhere between 2 and 3, but it's a decimal that goes on and on and on and on. So we could order it in something, but that placement is a little bit iffy because it's a decimal that goes on and on and on. We tend to round these to make sense of them, but they're called irrational numbers because they exist but they don't exactly fit into our system. So let's go ahead and highlight that as well. And then we're going to add this to our notebook and do a little Desmos practice to see if you can determine